the coastal path, Fife. Rugged, beautiful, and full of adventure. Just outside the little town of Ely, I was about to tackle a walk unlike any other. Welcome back folks. Today I'm in the Kingdom of Fife and I'm doing a very unique and special walk known as the Ely Chain Walk. Now if you haven't heard of this one before, it's one of the UK's first Via Ferrata routes, which means Iron Path from Italian. And, you know, it does what it says on the tin. The walk involves a series of chains over some really rough terrain. There's a bit of scrambling involved, so if you don't have a head for heights, this might not be the walk for you. Today I'm starting from the west and moving towards the east. Now you can do this walk in either direction and most of the guides you'll see online are going the opposite way, but either way is fine. So yeah, this walk is going to be interesting and to be honest, I'm a little bit nervous. The town of Ely and Errols Ferry rest on the northern coastline of the Firth of Forth. I drove there under the cover of darkness arriving just in time for sunrise. I parked the car at the Ely Holiday Park, just to the west of the town itself. From here I headed west, along a grassy path towards the coastline. The tide was out, way, way out. This wasn't by chance. Parts of the route are submerged when the tide is in. So two hours before high tide is the very latest you should look to start this walk. Or you might find yourself calling on the RNLI for a rescue. I followed the path along the shore, gazing at the huge ocean valiant fixed in place in the churning waters of the Forth. The paths were quiet at this time in the morning, and it seemed like some of the locals were having a lie-in. It was quite hazy, but I could make out the unmistakable outline of Bass Rock in the distance. The sun was still low in the sky as I headed up to King Craig Point. Soon after, I spotted a little sign attached to a rock. This was the start. The until now gentle landscape, transitioning into harsh, jagged rock. I headed down a steep dirt path towards the ocean. The sign, making the dangers of what lay next abundantly clear. Happy with my life choice, I ploughed on across the rocks. The rock was coarse and abrasive, great for gripping onto. I soon reached the first chain. So here we have the first chain, and as you can see, it's pretty steep. Now all you need to do is make sure and keep three points of contact at all times. And you've got the nice helpful chain here to bolt onto two. 
The first chain leads down into a small bay, with a glimpse at some of the higher climbs that await, and a small cave to explore. I skirted along the cliff edge with the chain's aid. The next chain, however, was the first big test. A 10 metre vertical ascent up the rock face. Luckily, footholds have been carved into the rock to make it much easier. If you have big feet like me though, you might need to search around a little for space to put your big hoof. It's all over pretty quickly and you'll reach the top where another down climb awaits. Again, just take your time. Always face the rock when descending and check your footing. I made my way further along the coastline. Hard and dark volcanic rock, the only barrier between me and the raw power of the sea. The route was first created in 1912, believed to have been installed by fishermen to help them retrieve their nets. It was closed in April 2010 after the majority of its chains were stolen. Fife Council quickly replaced them however, and it was open again by June that same year. Although not considered a true via ferrata route by some, with its marine grade stainless steel handholds, it certainly isn't your standard scramble. Turning the corner, the eye is immediately drawn to the captivating lines of the great columnar basalt cliffs that tower above the shoreline. Formed when the ancient lava that once flowed here began cooling and contracting, petrifying into these magnificent geometrical shapes. The tide was now rising and the countdown had begun. It was time for the next chain. Now I find this one of the harder chains. The reason being at the bottom here, it protrudes a little bit outwards so it's pretty difficult to get uh, your feet on the rocks here and these are usually a little bit wet and slippy as well so just be careful on this one. Although quite exposed, hand and footholds were plentiful and the climb is over pretty quickly. A small walk leads to the next chain and a framed view of the beach ahead. I down climbed the next small chain and into the most spectacular section of the walk the area's volcanic past, clearly on show. The beach, covered in a mass of perfectly smooth, dark pebbles. The larger rocks had ripples, worn into their surface, like the ocean surrounding it. landscape, adopting a grey, barren and lifeless demeanour. But don't be fooled, there are a number of creatures that call this place home. Glancing out to sea, you may see gannets, cormorants, oyster catchers and eider ducks, just to name a few of the birds in this area. Unfortunately, 2021 has seen an unprecedented number of seabirds found dead on the east coast of Scotland, the cause of which 
is still being investigated. A short while later, I arrived at the final chains and the part of the walk that I had been dreading the most. So here we go, the toughest section for me anyway, in my opinion, of this walk. It starts off pretty well, There's plenty of footholds etc here. So when we get around here we can see the problem. There's a little bit here we have to go jump from there across to there. And last time I was here that bit was very very slippery. We'll see how it is today but we'll manage somehow, we have to. Yeah, you can see it's a pretty steep drop there and these footholds are pretty, pretty small and pretty slippery. To be honest though, a fall from here probably wouldn't kill me. Just end up with some very sore legs, I think. So you just try to figure out how I'm going to make this manoeuvre. Ah, there we go, that wasn't too bad. I took a moment to head up towards the cliff to see the huge overhang. The concave rock face was acting like a parabolic dish, reflecting and concentrating the sound of the ocean behind me, so it felt like I was surrounded by waves. The final chain, or the first, depending on your direction. A relatively straightforward walk around the cliff edge. Afterwards, you'll soon leave the dark volcanic rock behind and onto the golden sands of Errol's Ferry Beach. Well folks, that was the Ely chain walk. Now I think I must have done two or three Ely chain walks a day with the amount of back and forwards getting all those clips. But it's good exercise, good upper body exercise as well, holding on those chains and pulling yourself up. Now if you're afraid of heights, you might find this walk a little bit difficult. Not impossible, but there are some steep sections of vertical down climbing that might put you off. But if you enjoy scrambling then, this is definitely one for you. Now that I've done the route, there's two options of getting back. You can either head back along and do it again, or there's an upper route as well that'll take you along the cliff tops here and give you some good views out to the sea. So I'm going to take the latter option and have a wee look, look at those views. So thanks everybody for watching. I really do appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.